Well, good evening, Internet students. Professor Z here. Welcome to another astonishing lesson on framing interior walls for your log home. This is going to be a very interesting and fun video. Uh, this is where the beams are installed, your load-bearing walls are installed, and also your loft floor for your movie theater and your library are going to be installed during this video. Ever think that you could use a full capacity chainsaw professionally and at the level to do professional grade work on your log home? Ever think that you could understand what the term load bearing wall means? Or how about uh, supporting uh, your roof, uh, installing beams that could support your roof and also uh, your interior floors for your upper level? This level, this video will go ahead and illustrate how to construct uh, the load bearing walls and hoist beams up by yourself, plumb and square all beams and installed properly to a professional level. Tools and equipment, hammer, nails, square, circular saw, tool belt with ample supplies, cordless screw gun, wood screws, step ladder, blueprints, two by sixes to build the interior walls, not two by fours. Step one, planning the milestone. Okay, so today, students, uh, we're going to put on our Amish hats. There, I just put mine on. And we're going to become professional woodworkers. And we're going to have to do chiseling and hewing of beams, cutting them, operating a chainsaw very professionally and carefully, and getting those plumbed beams installed for your second floor interior uh, capacity. Note, this is... Um, uh, different uh, cuts with your chainsaw uh, than in the in the next uh, couple of videos for your windows. Um, you're just going to be making straight cuts for beams, um, and also you have to take a special note to the type of fuel. Um, most chainsaws do not use gasoline or diesel or propane or kerosene or whatever you might think butane. Um, it, it uses a special 50 to 1 oil to gas mixture and I found nice neat cans already mixed up and ready to go at the home and garden store and it also stores for quite a long time I mean gasoline students store for about one year uh, unless you put the gas additive in like I do then you can get another two or three years out of it however the chainsaw fuel that you buy, as long as you don't open it, will last for you know a good five to ten years. Make sure you read the label to understand it. So, also one thing is about cutting with a chainsaw. I purchased a pair of chaps. Um, it it's not going to protect you from cutting your leg off, but if the chainsaw bounces and hits your leg, uh, and your fingers not on the trigger. You understand when your finger's not on the trigger, the chain actually stops almost immediately. Well, the chaps will bind up in the chain and actually kind of save your legs from a severe cut. Um, and, and there would be like a one-time use for that. But I recommend wearing uh, steel-toed boots, chaps for your legs, uh, leather gloves that go up to almost your elbows, safety goggles, earplugs, and also a hard hat uh, when you actually operate the chainsaw. So those are your tips. Step two, lay out the beams. The first thing you have to do today is um, we're going to lay out all the beams for the loft uh, area, which is going to be the floor joists. They're also going to be your ceiling um, trusses in your kitchen, which the way they designed the log home, the architect, is the, the beams are going to be six inches uh, uh, deep, uh, you know, three inches wide and some are most of them are 12 feet long but you're going to have to stack them because your loft area is going to go 16 feet so you're going to stack two beams together but uh, make sure you understand your certified blueprints and where uh, those beams are going to go so tip how are you going to lift those heavy beams above your head and you're all by yourself at the job site uh, they sell these neat little lifts at the home and garden store and you have up to 500 pounds that you could put on it. Um, it. You crank it down to the floor. It's got two little arms on it. You put the beam on it and securely uh, level it. 
and then you start cranking on the crank and it lifts it up you know eight feet to ten feet in the air um, I do recommend you have somebody else with you uh, on these days because should you fall off a ladder get uh, have a mishap with a chainsaw or a beam fall down and hit you um, if you're the only one at the job site that is going to be detrimental um, and if you're injured and you can't uh, be mobilized um, and you don't have your cell phone close by you may be laying there for days uh, or even die if you don't get immediate attention so I recommend having somebody there with you uh, just a quick tidbit step three we need to cut the beams uh, first thing we need to do is pick a side and measure the first beam this was a, a gulam beam which actually spanned the full 20 feet of the great room remember I didn't have a beam in the middle of the great room holding it up so I had an extra sturdy beam um, to kind of keep the great room wide open and then uh, each beam pocket will need to be cut with your chainsaw and you need to measure the end of the beam so for instance the gulam beam was uh, 12 inches uh, deep and um, six inches wide uh, of course it was over 20 feet long so I needed to make a beam pocket that was 12 inches uh, deep and also six inches wide to kind of fit that in on both sides warning warning hopefully you've you've practiced with a chainsaw repeatedly I can't stress this enough um, this is going to be an extreme advanced stage for chainsaw cutting and um, again there should be enough scrap lumber outside from your previous steps to where you can grab some and start practicing with the chainsaw and understand how to cut you know cut diagonal cut in circles scraping with the chain um, cut above your head cut to the side you know you, you got to be very accurate with that chainsaw because that's going to be your bread and butter uh, for this step um, in this lesson tip it is recommended that you purchase um, the elevator scaffold that you could stand on and work mine went up to eight feet high and you're gonna see in the beam videos coming up that I was able to put the brakes on this and actually hoist beams up onto this elevator scaffold then climb on the scaffold and then hoist the beam up to the loft floor um, and that was very helpful but remember in this video the loft floor is not even built so that's what we're doing here step four hoist the beam so this is a step where uh, you're going to rest the beam level on your moving floor jack and you're going to start cranking it up into the beam pockets and um, you might have to go a little above it uh, first and then wiggle it back into place and then set it down into the two pockets. Uh, the Gulam beam was very large and weighed I think 500 pounds. Um, I did have help doing that this step I actually had three Amish brothers helping me uh, do this step and they helped me in the previous step stacking logs as well um, but again like I said in my earlier uh, opening statement that you know out of the thousand days on this project there was roughly 25 days of help so um, that's one for the history books uh, once you crank up the elevator uh, with the gulam beam over your head you're going to place it into the beam pockets and then you're going to have your partner or Amish uh, brother go ahead and insert a 20 inch screw be on the ends of the gulam beam to, to secure it in place remember that the beam pocket will hold the beam right so you have to make sure it's cut deeply enough to hold it and then you're going to um, ensure that it is secured with those 20 inch screws but the screws are not there to hold up this beam because it won't but keep that in mind uh, so you have a load bearing post which is going to uh, secure this uh, beam and then of course from your certified architect plans if you went down into your crawl space slash basement you would see that there's extra floor joists three of them stacked together uh, which actually hold up that entire configuration of um, of post and gulam beam okay um, and you have to understand uh, students that you know load-bearing walls 
uh, are load bearing and, and houses uh, can weigh you know 10 15 20 60 tons um, and you're essentially holding up the house with a load bearing wall <clears throat> so you, so in other words you a quick tip is look underneath the um, and your crawl space and see if there's floor joists stacked together where you have load bearing walls because that's where the support needs to be okay if you're building a load bearing wall over your OSB subfloor and there's no support under it that's not where a load bearing wall goes and you better be very cognizant of what you're doing because you can have the entire house crash into the basement uh, if you don't understand what I just said. So please consult a contractor or a building manual to understand that. <clears throat> Step five, loft floor joists. <clears throat> so once you have your beams in place, now you have to put in the loft floor joists, which do also dubs as the ceiling of the kitchen and part of the great room. Um, and then again, they're also gonna have beam pockets on the opposite end of the uh, great room. And they're going to be going um, in a different direction than what we initially did with the Gulam beam. Um, so it's going to be kind of a, 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 a crisscross pattern here. Uh, the Gulam beam will hold up these uh, floor joists um, and also will extend into the great room and make it look very nice. Um, so once they are secured one at a time, um, you're going to insert your 20 inch screws. Uh, both into the back of the beam pocket and then in the front area of the Gulam beam and that'll secure your floor joists at that point. And, and the neat thing is these screws are all hidden so when you walk into the house you don't see any screw heads or anything. Everything looks like just wood stacked on each other but it's very secure uh, and the architect plans are very uh, well done as well. So uh, step six interior studded walls. Okay so here's Here's what I'm talking about with your load bearing walls. Be very careful and cognizant of this. Um, you know, now you want to mark the beams where the load bearing walls will be inserted. So look at your certified blueprints to get this done. Um, the next step is to construct the walls to specifications. Start out by building the box around the perimeter of the load bearing wall with your two by sixes. I use two by sixes because it's a log home and I could get away with that because the beams are six inches wide. Also, the logs are six inches wide, you know, at, at the upper groove part. And um, so two by fours didn't make sense. It, 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 I had to use two by sixes. Um, and the, the only thing that it costed me was I had to have extension door jams later in the process uh, because the home and garden store didn't have uh, doors that they sold with six inch uh, jams. It was only four inch jams for two by fours, which is essentially three and a half inches. Um, so I basically had to use door jazz, but other than that, the, the walls are much more stronger with two by sixes. Okay, now when you build the box, remember a stud goes in between uh, that box every 16 inches on center, okay? So in every house that's code, typically I think in every state, 16 inches on center. Um, this will also create a heavier box when you nail them in. Look at my video here and you can see what I'm talking about. Then you're going to hoist that entire box up into place. You're going to make sure it's leveled and squared uh, and also over the floor joists in your crawl space or basement. And then you're going to nail it into place on all four sides, into the logs, into the floor, OSB floor, into the uh, beam on the top, and then into uh, any other structure that it might be resting on to on the other side. Uh, once again, there's no need to glue the interior walls in place like you did with the OSB subfloor uh, because it's not really going to squeak you're not going to walk on it um, so don't worry about that just make sure they're very snug and solid because they're going to be holding up a great significant portion of the home the next step is to review the print for non load bearing walls which I had put a few in as well to kind of tie off the bedrooms and uh, the and the great room um, and you will construct these the same way you did for load bearing walls. However, there won't probably be as many floor joists under these um, walls because they're not going to be holding up any portion of the home. Uh, again, use two by sixes and um, I, I went ahead and uh, created the boxes. 
then put the studs in it at uh, every 16 inches on center then I had to raise it up by myself and put that in place and you can see the video here how I did that so all right now take a look back at your project plan and review the work once again um, have you placed the heavy beams in the sockets have you inserted the floor joists uh, in according to specifications for your loft are your interior load-bearing walls up and are they over the proper floor joists underneath them and are your interior non-load-bearing walls up and and now it is time for your tongue and groove floor so step seven inserting tongue and groove floor for your loft area um, in order to perform this critical step students um, you know of building your tongue and groove loft floor you know you will continue to use the subfloor workspace um, and I would recommend already having purchased two saw horses maybe four and use your cordless circular saw and the generator to power up any of the tool batteries that you need that, that may go dead okay uh, my floor uh, tongue and groove panels were two inches thick and I would put them on the saw horses and allow them to be very um, cognizant of uh, where they were placed and cutting them and once they were cut I just had to put them in place and I only had to use one uh, strip um, per per um, per row and then um, you do want to glue down these tongue and groove boards because um, it is going to squeak when you walk on them so the glue actually kind of heals that uh, issue and then it is recommended to use a star headed screw instead of a Phillips screw or a, a standard screw because star headed screws you can get more leverage on and then also they have a, a greater bite into uh, the wood itself okay so now that your loft floor is complete your your interior beams are complete your floor joists are complete your interior load bearing walls and interior non load bearing walls are all installed to specifications now it's time to clean up your workspace take a look back at your plan snap a few pictures send a few home to your wife and tip this is a big tip invest in expensive tools okay I recommend that don't get cheap stuff because you're going to be rebuying stuff uh, not only are tools going to be used throughout the remainder of this project but they can be used throughout your lifetime if they're very durable and um, very um, well made having said that I had a set of cordless tools for everything that I've used for instance I had a cordless drill cordless circular saw cordless grinder cordless sawzall cordless lights and uh, cordless uh, anything I could have because they're much easier to use and they have the power today that are almost the same as a generator I had also purchased a backup set of all these tools with cords attached for those tough to reach spots cordless is better for run-of-the-mill same formats and cutting wood then a cord saw works good the cordless saws are used for high ladder and ambient movements that I needed to make uh, without having a cord to trip over and then also one other quick tip is always buy the same type of cordless uh, tools students because um, I'm not going to give any brand names but uh, let's just call it the yellow and black tools kit okay always buy yellow and black tool kits because that's going to be the same brand and the batteries will always interchange and you can also use um, uh, one battery socket to charge some of your batteries as you're using the other batteries in the uh, other tools that you're using as well so you kind of have interchangeable batteries interchangeable battery sockets um, and then everything is one brand and you can always go to the home and garden store and buy replacement refills and things like that so okay that's it see you in the next video and um, be sure to click thumbs up at the bottom and subscribe to the channel and if you can drop us a five dollar tax donation at five uh, at uh, www.university1310.org and this is professor z signing off students don't forget to complete your papers it's a one sheet paper that you're going to design up your own floor plan and um, keep that for yourself and we will see you in the next video. 
God bless and Godspeed.